Hello everyone! Today we are going to be doing a little bit of a LEGOCon 2022 edition discussion sort of thing. Now I did make a video about the 2021 LEGOCon, and in my opinion, uh, that, vi uh, that video basically covered LEGOCon as the DOTS disaster. Uh, and so in that presentation, I felt like it was lackluster, uh, even at some of the better bits, and then the continuous trend of just like oh hey look at dots let's shove dots in your face because you love dots we love dots how about dots and so i don't want to watch a presentation where they're shoving dots down my throat and i'm basically suffocating at that point and that is just not a good way to enjoy some lego content because if i'm sitting there trying to digest some lego and be a lego connoisseur uh, and all they're like, here, have dots. You know these dots that are always on clearance? Have dots, dots, dots. How about dots? Uh, so, yeah, that wasn't great. Which is why in 2022 LegoCon, I think there was like one dots references, and that was the dots camp. Which was honestly a good way to kind of have some kind of reference to dots that doesn't really mention dots at all, because it's just a small camera. It, that was a good reference, if it even was a reference to Lego dots. But at that point, Lego dots is dead, so... Bravo. Bravo on that acknowledgement. That was very appreciated. And then the segments themselves that were included were actually very good and relatively interesting. The Master Builder segment that we kept tying back to, uh, the minifigure segments, specifically with the larger scale ones, was definitely something nice and unique to see that wasn't there. I will admit the Super Mario Little Chase uh, was a bit unexpected. But I think it did show off that you can just kind of find these new characters off and about. So maybe it wasn't particularly the thing that I most thought about during that. But I can definitely understand. I could definitely see how this year's LEGO Con, instead of being a boring mess where you just kind of fall asleep, uh, where you just kind of fall asleep, forget about it, and then be like, wait, what did I do for the past like two hours or something? Whereas this one, you could actually physically enjoy it, and you could kind of see where there was a mix in with both uh, the adult fans and also the child fans. And that was very good to see this kind of healthy balance of showing off both of these communities. And it might be because this is 90 years of play, and specifically we had some great sets revealed, uh, like the uh, Explorer and also the Castle. Very excited for the Castle. Uh... And also some of the other stuff that was uh, introduced. Because unlike last year, we actually got new stuff revealed that we hadn't uh, seen before. We might have known about it. Uh, like how we knew that there was supposed to be an ATT release. But we didn't really know all of the details up until like maybe right before LEGOCon or like leading up to it. And then by the time that LEGOCon rolls around, it's like, okay, here's this cool new thing that you can look at. And a lot of the stuff that was included was brand new stuff, which was actually really good to see. Uh, how we didn't really see any of this stuff before, but now it's like, here you go, surprise, we've got all this big stuff planned, uh, whereas when the reveals happened last year, we already knew the majority of the stuff, which was very underwhelming and disappointing. And also the bits that they did for the like introduction to certain stuff wasn't just like, please cut out my eyes and rest my soul in pieces. It was like, oh, this is actually pretty interesting, and I'm quite intrigued to see what comes next. Because I felt relatively interested by this year's LEGO Con, even though it wasn't specifically I wasn't interested in everything. Uh, it was definitely far better, and I could actually say that this was well done. We didn't have too many technical issues, uh, par, a par a few, but that's understandable. It was a two hour and 20 minute, roughly, presentation, so it's definitely expected to have at least a little bit of technical issues here and there. But... What I can say is, unlike being completely negative about the last one where I wanted to chuck it and throw it a trash can, throw it out the window, and then start a massive just bonfire pit of just burning those memories away, this time I'm actually very intrigued as to what they have planned for 2023 because through this presentation they've showed that they actually have potential in making a decent uh, Lego con uh, through like a virtual space. Which brings me to the second point of this video, the fact that instead of watching this on the day it came out, which is why this video is delayed uh, till Friday, is because I was actually uh, attending a physical LEGO convention, Brickworld Chicago. I came out here uh, and decided to spend some time in the local area uh, because I wanted to check out the convention on Saturday. 
and that was a nice surprise, you know, unlike the, uh, they were actually playing the, uh, LegoCon live event there, uh, I didn't quite notice until later, but it was definitely a stark contrast compared to, um, compared to what you'd expect from LegoCon Live. This was more of just like a presentation. You could do a little bit of shopping. You could do a little bit of looking, you know, it was a very diverse community. You could do some talking, you know, engage with the people. And that was very nice. You know, that was refreshing where you could actually have like a physical conversation. You could do a bunch of stuff, which was a lot more interesting than just sitting down there watching, staring at a screen and then being like, okay, cool. Got to see some nice Lego here. But instead, you actually feel like you're engaged with the, and immersing with the community, which is very nice and definitely a nice contrast. And when you pair these two together, where you have your like physical conventions and you also have this virtual convention where you can kind of see what the Lego network has in store for you, you can kind of see, okay, this is what they're trying to do. This is what they're attempting. This is how they're branching out. And then you see how the people themselves are like, reacting upon this like how they're interpreting all of this change and how it can benefit them and then you kind of have both these worlds where if you combine them together you have this lego scape where all people like can enjoy the can enjoy the lego brick they can have a good time with lego and then you can also highlight some of that where you can both highlight the creators but you can also highlight the good that lego has done throughout the years and I think that's a good balance that should be taken away, where it's not, oh great, I've just wasted two hours of my life, but instead, you can see this as a step in the right direction where we're trying to, where LEGO is bridging the gap between what you'd expect LEGOCon to be online and also in person if you decide to go one of the centers or days that they actually, uh, where one of the various like host cities does something like that. And that's pretty cool that we've kind of, getting to a new realm of Lego where everything is a lot more public, there's a lot more people being reached, and that more people can kind of celebrate this passion or hobby that is honestly quite special because not only is an art form, it's a way that people can kind of relax, it's a way that people can cope with living. It definitely has a lot of potential depending on who you look at or who you talk to and that's kind of the beauty of lego it's nothing it's nothing crazy nothing fancy it is it is expensive i will say that it is a bit on the pricier end but it also has that quality attachment to it where it's like you look at it and you can feel satisfied by something instead of if you buy which i could definitely do a knockoff bricks episode as well i can tie that in here where you feel satisfied with the product that you get rather if you're looking at something that's not a lego product you're like okay this is this is there the model's there but then when you hold it it doesn't feel the same you don't get that same satisfaction because it just doesn't have the same value you just you just don't see it there which is definitely the thing that separates lego from its competitors is the fact that you look at something and you can definitely see the potential it has there and the sturdiness that because of the way that the lego brick is designed it doesn't in like the plastic that's used it becomes something that's tangible in a way that resembles quality and allows people to make many things out of it whereas if you look at the competitors and i know this is going on and on in random circles but if you look at the competitors they have something where you know you can see it's a lego brick it has the same style but it doesn't have the same quality attached to it and that's kind of the separation, whereas if something's made of Lego, it has this renowned quality behind it where you can kind of see that it is kind of bolstered up as this cooler object because it has the sturdiness and you can actually physically see it as a model. But if you look at something made by a competitor, it's like almost falling apart in a sense. And I know this from experience because my brother a little bit ago uh, bought himself a, a little bit of a fake jet, a brick built jet. And now this thing is crumbling to pieces. It might look like Lego, but it doesn't feel like Lego, which is, I think, the big takeaway. Whereas, like, you can definitely buy the fakes. You can definitely enjoy yourself. If that's what you want to do, you can definitely enjoy it. Nothing wrong with that. You're not hurting anybody else. You can you enjoy the thing that you want to enjoy your way. But if you're looking at it from perspective of which is the better quality, it's no question that Lego definitely captures the market because of the way that it's able to encapsulate the quality of its product. And it does mean that it gets expensive, but at the end of the day, if they can 
if they can prove the quality like how they've shown the quality change between the second uh, between the first and second Lego con it definitely shows that they're improving as a business maybe not maybe not as quickly as we want them to because they're still a little bit against the fans in many ways that has definitely been proven on many occasions but they're definitely heading in the right direction i think that's very important as a business that instead of physically focusing on most of your profit margins or all of your profit margins even though lego still does that on many occasions with price hikes and definitely overpricing quite a decent set they definitely still think of the consumer some of the time and they definitely still know how to deliver a quality product in the end even though it's not maybe as universally acceptable as it could be it still does a lot of good and there's definitely still a lot that can be taken away from the direction that lego's been heading and that's definitely an interesting thing now this has definitely been a random sort of video that has no correlation whatsoever to anything and you've definitely enjoyed staring at LegoCon 2022 for the past uh what is it, 11 minutes i doubt that many people will get to this point in the video but hey that's a part of making random gibberish that you don't even know what's going on because i've lost track of time memory kind of fell apart way way back again are we still talking about dots anyways i hope you enjoyed this random compilation of ideas uh i hope to see you next time bye and thank you for watching that has been uh, definitely an interesting little segment uh hope to see you next year if i do get there so bye